Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. So it's time to get this mitre station put together. I got the top part done last week and I've been having a think on how I want to support it or attach it to the wall. I don't want to make cabinets for it to sit on because I've got enough stuff to stick under there already. So I've decided I can put some battens on the wall to support it. With the mitre saw station sat on my bench, I can start cutting down some 2x3s. And even with just using this top bit, it makes cutting things down so much easier having them supported both sides. Now, I can't really just screw these to the wall because they won't be deep enough as the window frame sticks out a bit. So I'm going to glue a couple of bits together to make like these L shape brackets. I'm going to need three of these in total, one for either side of the window and then one to go along the end wall. So one of the purposes of building this mitosaur station is to incorporate into it a couple of other machines. I've got the planar thicknesser and the air compressor, which I both want to fit underneath it. I can get it attached at pretty much exactly the same height as my other workbench, with enough clearance for both those machines. I mark out the height the top of the battens need to go, and then I'm going to draw a line so I can line them up nicely. I worked out where all the studs are, and then I've drilled and countersunk some holes in the battens so that each hole is going to line up with a stud. I already started the screws in the hole, so just make it a little easier. Then I can line it up with the line I've drawn and get them screwed in place. Now I could have drilled holes through the top support and put screws through that into the mitosaur station top, but I've got about a hundred of these little tiny L brackets, so I'm going to attach them on and use them to screw into the top. So small, they're a bit tricky to hold and screw in place, so I ended up just screwing them in and then getting some pliers and straightening them up. Right, moment of truth time, will it all fit in place and will it fall over? Nearly. But it goes in and it's all pretty rigid like that but obviously it's going to need some support in that corner. One knock and it will fall over, so before I do anything else, I'm just going to get some screws through those brackets into the bottom, and then it's going to be pretty secure. So I thought about making some legs for the end, and then I was in B&Q and just saw these. I've never liked these metal poles, as I think they look ugly, but for about £4 for the pole and the brackets, I thought this was a really simple solution and doesn't take up much room. I shouldn't really be worried about things being ugly for a bit of shop furniture. First I get this cup screwed into the bottom side in the corner of the top. Then I can thread the other cup onto the bottom of the pole and get the pole put into place. You can see how much it pushes the top up so it really sagged. I get level to get the pole straight and then I can get it screwed to the floor. I did think this would probably need another support under the saw itself, but then I fitted my Stanley MDF organising tower thingy under it and put a block of wood on top so that supported it pretty much in the middle as well. So that's really it all done. So let's see if we can get the bits underneath it. The Metabo planar thicknesser on the new stand that's slightly shorter than the one it comes with goes under, you've got a couple of centimetres to spare at the top. You do have to take the fence off so I need to build something to store that and then the Dewalt saw can go in place. The saw lines up with the window, so you've got a bit of extra space to get the cable and the dust extraction hose down. So now I've just got to make some fences for it. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, and please subscribe for more videos.